Bing bong. Guess what's back? What's going on guys? Sean here going all gamer. It is the weekend and here is weekly news roundup. <music> Welcome to weekly news roundup. Show burnt up gaming news stories of the week. And kicking off our news this week is a little purple dragon or more so how Activision have managed to botch the launch of the physical copy for Spyro the Reignited Trilogy. The success of Crash Bandicoot the Insane Trilogy really showed publishers that gamers really want to see older titles coming back and just really shining in the new light of current generation. And it's absolutely brilliant to see that the next one to follow in Crash Bandicoot's footsteps is Spyro the Dragon. However, if you're planning on owning all three Spyro games on one single disc, you might have to think differently about that since Activision have put out that the launch is going to be a little bit weird. Thanks to Reddit, it was confirmed that the only game available on the disc is going to be the first Spyro game, while Ripto's Rage and Year of the Dragon will be available via download. The game's official website also confirms this news. Now, it's not known whether that these games will be downloadable via a unique code for each copy of the game, or if they're going to be downloadable through a patch. But the real question is, if you're going to release a physical copy of a game with two thirds of the game not on the disc, then what's the point in actually releasing a physical copy at all? Personally, I see two possible reasons why Activision would do this. The first being is that it completely defers away from loaning a friend or whatever the game and letting them play through all three of them and would actually encourage players to go out and buy more. Another reason is simply because the games are too big to fit on one disc. Look, Crash Bandicoot is a much smaller game compared to Spyro in terms of scale. The hub worlds and just the level worlds in Spyro were much larger than Crash, so obviously to remake them for current generation, you know, it, it might be too much for a disc. So that's one reason why you would make them downloadable. But honestly, given Activision's recent history with uh, remasters and remakes, I'm looking at you, Modern Warfare Remastered. It's fair to say that they might be doing this purely just to boost sales and push Spyro as much to make money off them, which is kind of dumb. But look, I can't really say much on that. You know, that's just, that's what they're doing. So we have to run with it. What a sad note to start the video on. In other and much better news, I must say, uh, Spider-Man for the PlayStation 4 has finally gone gold. Yes, Insomniac's hugely anticipated Spider-Man title for the PlayStation 4 is finally ready to hit shelves on September 7th. Insomniac's game celebrated the news by sharing this lovely little image via their Twitter account. For those of you who don't know, basically when a game goes gold, it means that the game is essentially ready for uh, printing on discs or turning into physical copies to eventually go on sale on a marketplace or a store. Essentially, they become ready to ship. And when the game goes gold, that basically means that any chance of a delay or a change in the release date is pushed out to pasture. It usually means that the release date that was set by the developers is pretty much the one we're gonna go with. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that a change won't happen to the release date, but given how much stuff we've seen on Spider-Man PS4 so far, I can fairly say that this game is gonna be releasing on September 7th. So we can finally swing into action in New York City as Spider-Man, and I absolutely cannot wait for that game. It's gonna be amazing. No pun intended at all there. Next up is the monthly update for all PlayStation Plus games available to download for free this August. As always, PlayStation 4 leads the way with its main titles including Mafia 3, an intense mob story set to the backdrop of 1960s America in the fictional city of New Bordeaux. Along with Mafia 3, PlayStation users can also get their hands on Dead by Daylight, a 1 vs 4 symmetrical multiplayer game that sees players desperately trying to survive the advances of a murderous psychopath. Or at least that's what the notes say anyway. <laughs> PlayStation 3 players can also nab the fantasy title Bound by Flame as well as Serious Sam 3 BFE. And finally, PlayStation Vita players are getting the Slice em Up Draw Slasher and the turn based strategy game Space Hulk. However, that's not all for PlayStation Plus this month as Sony is also including a bonus VR game experience called Here They Lie, which is a psychological horror and to be fair, actually does look pretty cool, but I won't be playing it anytime soon because I don't have a PlayStation VR. And along with this, PlayLink trivia is also being made available via PlayStation Plus. Don't ask me what that is, I didn't even bother looking it up before I did this video. All games listed are available to download from August 7th and will be available until September. However, Here They Lie will be available until October 2nd, a little bit extra time there, similar to what they did with Black Ops 3. And PlayLink will remain until November 6th. 
Next, Shenmue the HD Collection, which features the first two Shenmue games remastered in all HD glory, finally got a Japan release date, and it's quite a while after the Western market gets hold of the game. Shenmue HD is set to hit Japan on November 22nd, a good three months after it's released in the West. The Western version will see its release on August 21st for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC. However, the Japan version is exclusive only to PlayStation 4, which is kind of understandable considering the huge popularity of PlayStation 4 in Japan. I mean, seriously, look at sales figures for the Xbox One in Japan. They're actually laughable how low they are. And finally, and I really, really don't know why I included this story in this video, but here it is. Parents are now hiring tutors to train their children to get better in Fortnite. I'm serious. You, you heard that correctly. This story was first revealed by the Wall Street Journal, and according to that, parents are actually spending between $10 and $20 to hire in these tutors to basically teach their children how to get better at the Battle Royale mode in Fortnite. And honestly, this story went on for quite a lot, but I was so blown away by the stupidity that parents are actually hiring in people to train their children on how to get better, rather than letting them just play the game and get better by themselves. I just, I gave up. I closed it down. It was ridiculous. Uh, if you want to go and read it, I've left a link to the source in the description below. Seriously, go have a look. I'm not making this stuff up. This is real. And it was kind of depressing to read, but... There you go. And that is your gaming news for the week. Thank you very much for tuning in. Don't forget to smash that like button if you enjoyed the video. If you want to follow up on any of the stories mentioned in this video, I've left links to all my sources in the description down below. So go check that out. We'll be back next week with another dose of gaming. But until then, you can stay up to date with us by subscribing to our blog or following us on Twitter. Links to all them also down below in the description. Once again, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. But until then, for all your news, reviews, playthroughs, and previews, stick with Going All Gamer. I just like shot up a load of spit there. I don't know what happened. Ugh. The success of crap EFE Bing bong, welcome. You've made it to the end of the video. Congratulations on making it this far. If you want to see more of our videos, you can do so by clicking on the boxes on the screen right now. And if you never want to miss out on our new videos, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell to stay notified. Also, to really stay up to date with us, you can do so by checking out our Twitter account and our blog, which I've left links to in the description below. Go on, head over there, and I'll see you in the next video.